Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Put the old man on the horn, will you, Pete? Is that a euphemism? I don't get it. This week we check out The Deadly Mantis. Directed by Michael Bay. And scripted by Sir Isaac Newton. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The film's early sections are a characterless hodgepodge of random events, maps, and stock footage. These are hot phones. Using them, it takes only 15 seconds to talk to Alaska, 10 seconds to alert Newfoundland, 5 seconds to contact you, 3 seconds to reach the Pentagon command post, 2 seconds to order pizza. What are you talking about? All of this is to let us know that something bad is happening in the Arctic. There's a very ordinary explanation for what happened. Maybe the men are on the way back to the base right now. On foot? There will be footprints in the snow. You see any? It was just a suggestion. There's no need to be a dick. What in the world? What is it? The only clue is this broken segment of a giant Terry's chocolate orange, which causes much head shaking in the scientific community. And they come to the unanimous conclusion that this problem could only be solved by a much more handsome scientist. Jackson talking. The Pentagon? Sure, I'll wait. You'd think he'd be more surprised by that. Well, it isn't every day the Pentagon calls you. This is his assistant, who has a unique way of telling men when she's interested in them. The light just turned green. Anyway, God's gift to paleontology figures out that this strange object is the spur of an insect. An insect? Well, that's where the process of elimination seems to lead us. But it's a further five minutes before anyone thinks to say, it is quite big. Something that must be incredibly, unbelievably huge. All in all, it takes half an hour of intricate plotting and speeded up Eskimos to work out that the Arctic is being terrorized by a giant praying mantis. You mean this cute little bird? Which would be a very effective way of raising levels of mystery and intrigue in a film that wasn't called The Deadly Mantis. I know what's doing it! Have to wait half an hour for the characters to catch up. It makes the scientists seem like morons. Doc, you're beginning to sound like Sherlock Holmes. An impression not dispelled by the overwhelming stream of factual inaccuracies they spout. Every known species of animal has a bony skeleton. No, they don't. Mm, lots of things. Worms, snails, insects, shellfish. Yeah, those are all animals, Professor. And the ant inside this amber is at least 90 million years old. Well, that's clearly not an ant. The deer fly does 600 an hour. 600 miles an hour? Are you high? <laughs> that sounds logical. The professor and his assistant then visit the sex-starved soldiers of the North Pole in search of the beast. We... we don't speak up. He's with a woman. A female woman. And you know what? It doesn't look bad. I'd say the effects are at least on par with the excellent them and a million miles ahead of the similarly plotted The Giant Claw. Well, where do we go from here? Most monster movies would now turn to how to destroy the monster, usually via some new radiation weapon. But killing it doesn't seem to be a problem. After all, it's just a giant bug. The issue is finding it. If there is such a thing, why hasn't anybody seen it? That's the thing. If your movie is based around the inconspicuousness of a 50-foot insect, then you have a problem. I'll buy that it can hide at the Arctic, but not once it flies south. You see, I really feel like someone would notice that. Hold me. If you've got a film you'd like us to review, leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe.